Hey everybody, Rodham here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 17 of Stationeers. So now that I'm back, I've been away for a bit, I have a lot of feedback uh, to provide. So one of the people on my Discord channel uh, demonstrated how you end up naming the pipes, or rather coloring them. It is not with the uh, spray paint can. Instead, uh, you do it with uh, color tags. So color equals black and then nitrogen. There we go. And then of course, uh, the only issue is I had colored all these, um, their respective colors, so I'm gonna have to fix all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you'll see what this looks uh, once it's done. I guess I have two green paints. I started with one, so let me go ahead and grab my green paint and I'll fix all that stuff up. Uh, I have a lot of other tips indeed. Uh, but I will work on these first. Okay, so there it is. Nitrogen properly spray painted. Um, and we will continue that trend. Um, color equals black. Carbon dioxide. And just about any colors can be used. And then, of course, you can have multiple tags. I'll demonstrate that here. Color equals black. Uh, pollutants. Color equals red. Bad stuff. See? Uh, and that would obviously all display. Now, the thing is, um, you can also do line breaks, paragraphs, everything like that. So it allows you to label pretty complicatedly if complicatedly was a word. All right, so I need to, let me figure out what colors I need. I need white, gray, and khaki. Okay. There's my white. There's my gray. Uh, I guess I'll just replace the pipe for khaki. I'm not sure where the paint is. I might've just dropped it around here. That's one of the things that I need to, uh, that, well, not I, but everyone needs to do, which is to put stuff away uh, exactly where it belongs because it is very easy to end up losing things. And, um, you know, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not tidy, uh, what you can end up doing is not being able to find whatever you're looking for. All right. So this will look a little weird because it's just the floating pipe. There we go. And that's all fixed. I'll put my master pipe down. Uh, I don't have a master red uh, at the moment. So let me go ahead and get that. Uh, master red's pretty easy to grab because I'll just grab a straight pipe and. In fact, while I'm standing here, let me fix all these other pipes. Oops, I dropped the wrong thing. Uh, so that they're properly color-coded. And then I need to make some other fixes. Um, okay, no, this one shouldn't be blue. I'm doing this all wrong. As you can see, a little rusty from being away. Uh, okay. Black pipe. This should be blue, but that will eat the master. So let's collect the reds. And I just ate the red master because I didn't put one down. Good for me, man. Good for me. All right, let's take orange. And then we'll fix the coloring over there too. All right, and let me get a red pipe. Hello, orange. And I think I destroyed my blue as well. Uh, I don't know if I need a black, but uh, might as well put it down. All right, so let's get the blue master. There we go. Now all the, oh, and then one more red. Okay, and that should square it. Perfect. Now the labels. Uh, this should actually be color equals black. Um, N2O. Not NO2. Um, water. 
H2O or water as it is more, I'll just call it water. Doesn't really matter. It's just for me and my naming conventions, right? And volatiles. All right. Uh, looks like my dude is pretty hungry. Uh, what I'm going to do before I walk away is to default color the remainder of these pipes plop, and maybe combine it with this stack. And then let's go eat a baked potato as we do. I have a lot of other uh, comments and suggestions and fixes uh, to make. All right. There's our potato that I'm going to slowly eat. Add one to the microwave. Keep in mind that, oh, I need to close the microwave door. Keep in mind that if you add more than one potato, that is not the recipe for baked potatoes and you won't end up getting a baked potato. Um, all the recipes are online or even in your little encyclopedia um, that you can use through your tablet that is also effective. All right, once I eat this, I'll go over some of the other tips. Uh, the main tip that comes to mind is that I have all of my filtration in parallel, uh, or in serial, not parallel, and I did that so that I could save a little bit of um, materials, but uh, in a filter and all that, but let's go ahead and put it in serial, because that's, or in parallel, wow, I am fumbling over words, uh, because that's what everyone wants to see. Uh, that was sort of the conclusion of everyone's requests so i'll go ahead and do that so we'll get gold and copper for one more atmo unit okay that did go in it didn't look like it went in for a second and then we'll use the pipes to put everything in parallel so the advantage of parallel is that uh, any one um, atmospheric unit can be used to do filtrations so you don't need um you don't necessarily need any of the other ones on, uh, which is nice, I guess. The disadvantage, of course, is that you have uh, additional um, units that you have to install. But the filters are very, very uh, power efficient. They, each filter uses about 5 watts, which is basically nothing. So uh, it's not really so much of an issue, if you ask me. Uh, it does use filters, but filters are not that expensive and they last a long time. Uh, so this will be my uh, filtration for uh, nitrous oxide. And we will label it as such. And then I'll have to lay out some new pipes for everything to be indeed um, parallel. That's not that hard to do, fortunately. Uh, what I will need is my orange paint so that we can fix the, oh, where is orange paint? Uh, here's my khaki paint. Do I not have orange paint? Okay, well, that's, uh, again... Likely misplaced it, but you never know. Uh, orange. And there we go. It's pretty cheap. It's just one iron each. Uh, like I said, I will eventually show the proper way, quote unquote proper way, to make colors using natural ingredients like flowers and elements and all that. Uh, but I'm not so worried about that at the moment. Okay. And we'll label this as... N2O filtration, just so that when we find it in the data, um, we can actually properly uh, know what it is. All right, next up, uh, making everything parallel. All right, so this also takes a little bit more piping, uh, but that's totally fine. Uh, so the difference here will be that all of the waste will go back to the shared pipe uh, rather than go one at a time. So we'll set that up. So what it will look like is the inputs here, these pink import inputs, uh, will actually input to 
every pipe all at once, like uh, like this. So basically making it parallel just involves a bunch more pipes to be laid down, which is totally fine. Just uh, more iron, but uh, I have iron. So the idea here is that each individual unit is pulling what it is destined to filter out and anything that it isn't in this pipe goes straight into the shared uh, reservoir, so to speak, of gases that need to be filtered. Uh, and that way, if I want to not filter CO2, for instance, um, I can turn off the CO2 filter. Of course, it will build up pressure in my uh, plumbing system, but uh, that would be one way to do it. All right, so let's pump pump out some pipes and then I have even more feedback to address so the pipes being parallel um, it's just a design preference in my in my mind uh, I chose serial initially but uh, a lot of you mentioned that you wanted to see parallel so here it is it's really not all that different um, it's a little less power efficient and resource efficient but it's more filtration efficient uh, so there's pros and cons to both. All right, I don't know how many more pipes I need, so I'm gonna go ahead and not print up more than need. All right, so if I was really, uh, and then anything that um, hasn't gotten filtered here, uh, I really don't think there should be anything that's unfiltered. Oh, and actually, no, no, that's not true. Let's, um, okay, that electricity is in the way. All I have to do now for this waste is to feed it back into the system. So let me drop this and reroute some of these wires just so that they're not in the way because at the moment they're uh, obstructing my plumbing. And that's a, a very common theme, you know, wires and pipes that... Uh, that obstruct one another is something you'll have happen quite a lot. Um, if you have OCD, for instance, this is probably not a safe game for you to play. Uh, so all of these other filters I can turn on. If they don't have filtration um, filters in them, uh, they don't really pull any gas. And then to know that this is working, uh, all we gotta do is, where is my, there's my tablet. Let's look at this pipe. Oh, this is the network analyzer. So we gotta switch cartridges. So I'm going to grab my Atmo, switch it for the network. All right, and then take a look. And in this pipe, there is a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of X. Uh, the reason is because that oxygen and X is being filtered and being replaced into the pipe pretty quickly. Um, yeah, so as you can see here, my X is going up. My oxygen is actually going up. It's just I have a lot of it, so it's hard to actually visualize. Uh, but yeah, my parallel pipes are working. And then, of course, if I turn off my oxygen filter, uh, you'll see the oxygen here build up. should at least as long as I'm pulling oxygen from the atmosphere that might not be the case let me double check some of my plumbing too because that wouldn't hurt uh, looks like I have some plumbing there that is old all right so double check in the plumbing Okay, now these vents are indeed pulling. And making sure that everything else is going up. Now if I turn off all the other filtration units, what will end up happening is my filter pipes here should build up pressure. 
uh, albeit slowly. But yeah, it's building up pressure. I'm not sure why it is building up. I think it, what it, it's what's happening is because of my parallel plumbing, I have a lot of potential volume in all these pipes, which is why you don't see uh, my pressure going up very quickly. Uh, it is slowly going up, and that's fine. All right, another thing I wanted to fix, uh, I'll leave it like that for a bit, is I don't actually need the uh, pipe analyzers. I can get the data right from the data port of the tank. Uh, so that's a very, very good point. That was a point made by, ooh, let me... Uh, Mad Dog, Mad, Mad Dog NL. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So what that would look like is something like this. So we grab the data off the tank and the data port on the tank knows the volume and the temperature of the gas inside. Um, so what I'm going to do is let's just go ahead and get rid of this analyzer. In fact, I can get rid of all these analyzers and just do it the efficient, correct way. And we'll refund half of that cost on the recycler. All right, now I'm just sort of half-heartedly throwing it over. All right, so now at the moment it will say NAN, which is, you know, invalid inputs basically. Uh, so what I'm going to do is CO2 tank will be my inputs here, and we'll grab temperature. And as you can see, that really hasn't changed at all. And then CO2 tanks will be the pressure here as well. And voila. Perfect. I should also keep an eye on the CO2 tank pressure. What I might need to do is set up an escape valve. Um, because the CO2 tank is far and above the most likely to rupture, as it is going to be the most pressurized if I'm grabbing gas from the atmosphere, or even if I'm grabbing gra gas from uh, smelting and things like that. Uh, CO2 is a, uh, a common outgassing um, uh, gas that you'll, you'll get from your smelting efforts. All right. So now I'm going to wire up all the tanks so that I can feed data to them. Uh, as you can see here, straight pipes and straight cables can intersect. But now I'm going to want to run power over to the other side of the room. Uh, but instead of running a cable all that length, I'll just, uh, I'll just use this cable. Because this cable here is the same network. The more uh, objects that I'm adding to my power grid, uh, the harder it will be to find the ones that I'm going to want. Luckily, I can filter for it, but it does, it can get pretty messy pretty quickly. Especially when you have complex systems like filtration. Uh, I probably don't at the moment need the data port on the filter. Uh, the data port on the filter would allow me to have access to information like um, how much filtration life I have left. That, in maybe much, much later what I could do is set up a little red light um, near the tanks to go off when my filter is low or something like that. That would be something to use the data port for, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about the data port, however, but I think... I think like filter health is one of the data points that you have access to. And of course, the full list is always on the stationer's wiki. Although I I will say the wiki um, I do find gets outdated pretty often. A lot, uh, almost weekly new things are added to this game. And as a result, uh, it is very challenging to keep the wiki up and accurate. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. I love the wiki, but, uh, sometimes like really skilled players are a better resource. All right. So the pressure regulators are still the way we are going to handle our, um, pressurizing the pace rather than volume pumps. Uh, one of the beauties, uh, and I think I mentioned this in some of the comments to you all, 
when you were asking why I'm using pressure regulators, it's mostly because they're a lot more silent. Act events um, are kind of noisier, and it's not great to have like extraordinarily noisy uh, filter systems because you have to, as soon as you pressurize your base, uh, what ends up happening is sound carries a lot better in the denser the uh, atmosphere or air is. And what ends up happening when you pressurize your base is everything that makes noise makes a whole lot more noise. Uh, that doesn't sound like a problem, but if you're going to live in a space, you don't want it to create a hell of a lot of noise all the time. It's um, pretty loud. Uh, you know, it's it's like listening to a loud garbage disposal cranking. Full full blast, full blast. Uh, that would drive me insane after a while. Maybe not insane, but annoyed. All right, so I am setting it up so that we can read um, the tank data and then display it accurately. So let me go ahead and get these all configured. Of course, I am almost out of um, piping and electrical cables. And then, of course, the labels on here can also be changed. So if I do um, color equals gray, or uh, maybe it doesn't work here. No, color equals red, uh, CO2 temperature. Uh, well, I guess that didn't work. Okay. I'll just leave it be. Uh, my labeler is on. Let's turn that off. Now for the data disk. And to flick this on. Uh, I've been displaying temperatures on the left. So we will filter to nit... Uh, what name does this tank have? A nitrogen tank. Okay. Uh, but the nitrogen tank, funny enough, is not actually hooked up, which is why I can't find it in the data network. This is probably the only one I didn't do. And this is the very last cable that I have. Cool. All right. Nitrogen tank. And... Jetpack on. Trying to jetpack to it. Make pressure, and we will find nitro. Grab the data disk, and pressure. So now we have the temperature and pressures of nitrogen. We don't have that labeled. We also don't have this colored. Um, so if I wanted to color the consoles, which I do, uh, we're going to need to grab our green and our gray. And I know I'm going to need a lot more colors apart from that. So let's grab volatiles. Let's grab... I don't need purple. Um, white. And khaki and all the other colors. Blue. Khaki. Orange. Um, all right. I don't think I... Oh, no, I do have red. And what we'll do with this is to start spray painting the consoles so they match the color of the network. Uh, just to make it, um, I don't know, easier to read. And more aesthetically pleasing. So the white one's already white. Khaki. Cool. Red. blue and pretty much everything in this game can be spray painted um, you know frames and your tools even can be spray painted so if you ever want if you ever start with tools and you don't like the color of the tools uh, that can be fixed uh, then I also have to label these so I think I'm just gonna write it as temp So, we'll fix that here. We'll just call these temps. 
All right, and then this will be oxygen pressure. Oxygen temp. Pollutants pressure. Pollutants temp. All right, let's get these data disked and then we can hop on over to the other side which may be unpowered. I don't have the cables for that yet. So, um, filtered oxygen, and there's the pressure. And set that as temperature. And as you can see, all of my gases roughly have the same temperature. The CO2 is a little bit cooler uh, because it there is more gas being pulled from outside, which is colder. Um, all right, and this is pollutants, pressure. Not a whole lot of pollutants. Uh, I was asked why I'm collecting pollutants. And one of the reasons is it makes for a very, very effective coolant. Uh, so when I want to cool down my base, um, it will help to have all those beautiful pollutants uh, because the pollutants are, are very thermal conductive, um, if I'm using that terminology correctly. All right. At the moment, I don't need an inventory full of paints. But what I do need is some more cabling. So let's get that printed up. All right, I make it 44 cable coils. That seems fine with me. And I do have some copper hiding back there. Oh, we even have copper that is unsmelted. Guess while I'm standing here, I might have, I might as well address my hunger. As you can see, I haven't really been managing my farm all that much, and it's mostly because I make more than enough food. I don't really need to worry too much about um, managing the farm. There's always food in there, and because it's somewhat of an enclosed system, um, there's not much worry to. Uh, that my farm will fail. You know, I, I don't think that's all that likely. All right. Eat my potato while I crank out a whole lot of cable coils. But as you can see, I used the 47 plus 14 that I had on me pretty quickly. Uh, it takes a lot of materials to sort of set up a base nicely. Now, I just wanted to mention that pressurizing a construction space or a base is actually not all that necessary other than making food um, and to make food of course you don't actually need um, uh, you don't actually need oxygenated environment you can make food uh, just with the co2 uh, so with that in mind uh, I am I guess basically saying that it is somewhat unnecessary to do what I'm doing but uh, the beautiful thing about this game, in my opinion, is you can set your own goals. Uh, so you can decide to have a goal that you want an oxygenated base or not. Uh, you don't really need to have one. Although, you know, personally, I think it's fun to try to advance science and technology and all that. Um, you know, but the very basics of survival in this game, you need to be able to grow food. You need to be able to... Um, uh, let's see, grow food, obtain power, and filter oxygen eventually, although you start off with a hell of a lot of oxygen. There's not even the need to drink water, uh, not by default. So uh, that's food for thought or water for thought. Um, but yeah, you will need some water for the plants. So I guess you need to filter water too. Water and oxygen, water and carbon dioxide are the only uh, uh, vanilla things that you need to have 
set up in your base. It's, it's a pretty, in my opinion, the game is very complicated, but it is somewhat of a low barrier to survival. Um, allowing new players to be able to survive after only learning a little bit of solar logic and stuff like that. Alright, so I'm just laying out the rest of the cabling, and I had something like 44 cables, and as you can see now, I have almost zero. Um... There is still some legacy cabling that I have lying around the base that I want to get rid of, but I am, at the moment, focusing on um, my display of all these pressures and, and filters and all this. My filtration is taking priority, and then I'll, I'll manage to isolate the first floor on its own power grid. All right, so this is supposed to be pressure of volatiles. And I definitely did not data port the tank here, did I? And that's probably true for all these tanks. I hadn't done this side yet. Come on. Stop being fussy. Okay, I did do the nitrous tank. Uh, so all those are all set. Cool. Back to the data disk. Yoink. I don't have any volatiles in my system yet. So it will read as sort of null over there for obvious reasons. I just don't have any. Um, so that's also true with water and nitrous. So pressure and temperature. And then I'll have to label them. Pressure for N, N2O. Actually, it's probably NO2 uh, just because I mislabeled the tank originally, and I'll fix that. All right. Done and done. N2O. N2O temp. Temp and pressures across the board. Uh, so it will look something like this when we're done. Uh, one last little thing that we can do. Oh, we have some free floating pipes here. Is to paint the cables that are associated with the networks the proper color too. Um, just to make sure that we've got everything looking uh, absolutely correct. I don't mind doing that. What do we need? Khaki and gray nope that might be enough colors the cables of course are red by default pipes are yellow by default um all right so let's go ahead and khaki those cables and anything above there above the frame will literally not be visible um so i don't need to worry about the rest of the cables this is just for aesthetics only uh in fact I'm thinking maybe when the ceiling panels are built, that part might not even be all that visible anyway. But it doesn't hurt to spray paint them now. I could check and slap a ceiling panel on and, and see if it is visible or not. Some orange, some deep blue, and we are all set. Very nice. Let's put away all the paints that we've got and then reanalyze the uh, plumbing network, so to speak, meaning grabbing the tablet. Uh, so the pressure 
in my pollutants is going up. You know, actually, because we have passive uh, pipes here, uh, I think I know what's going on. Yeah, what's going on is the act events are um, pulling air in, but they were pushing the air straight back out of the pass events here. Um, I don't know why I hadn't thought of that earlier. So actually what I'm going to do is temporarily uh, kill the piping to the passive inputs or inflow. Uh, just because at the moment all it's serving to do is to um, vent out uh, the... Uh, gases that I'm trying to input into my system. So I'm going to... I guess I'll cripple it here, just because it's more visible. I'm going to temporarily break some of my plumbing. Uh, but that should fix um, the problem that I was having, which was I was not getting the gas that I wanted to. So now, uh, if we check... If I... To prove that I just fixed what I had obviously sort of broken. We'll turn off all of these and then um, grab my tablet and you should see the pressure in here going up and yes indeed it is. Good. All right, all of these filters here can be turned off. All the monitors on this side can be turned off. Eventually what I'll have is all of the sort of data information stuff um, set up on a switch to turn them on and off at will so I don't have to do it one by one. Uh, and that's probably the next project I have in mind. Um, setting this entire floor up on an isolated sort of network. Uh, so now that my filters back on if I take a look at this pipe here um, we are filtering pretty much as fast as we can put gases in and as you can see the pressures here are changing uh, the pressure of the co2 is something I will have to uh, uh, regulate uh, one of the easier ways to do it would be to have a back pressure uh, regulator and I can do that right now I'll set that up uh, additionally, these pink pipes I'm going to put separately. That's to um, fix all the things I sort of broke. And we're no longer using gas mixing. So let's go ahead and recover some of the materials that we had. Uh... We had used and changed our minds about. Now, it's not to say I won't want a pipe analyzer sometime in the future, but I don't need to store it uh, at the moment. So this reagent mix is... All these reagent mixes are almost certainly steel. And what I'm doing is I'm just stacking like metals together. And we broke all that down. All right. So let's go ahead and... In this system, uh, what, what do we need to do? I was about to... Well, I think, honestly, that could probably wait for next episode. Um, to do the escape valve. Uh, it, it doesn't take a lot of effort. So, what I'm going to do here is set up a pressure regulator. And this could be done with really all or any of the gases. But I'm going to have a pressure, back pressure regulator like this. Just for the CO2 tank. Because all the other tanks are not likely to rupture. It's just my CO2 tank. Because the uh, atmosphere on Mars is very uh, much majority CO2. So I'm going to have a little back pressure regulator there. I think I'm going to need a few pipes. Uh, let's see. Do I have any passive vents lying around? I do. Cool. So all this will be is come on. Nope, I didn't want to throw that. It wants to be placed on a frame, doesn't it? 
I love that. All right, fine. We'll place it on a frame then. Oh, two stacks of shields, steel sheets. Let's go ahead and weld real quick. Some items are fussier than others about their placements. Uh, then, now that we have that, I can immediately <laughs> remove it. I find that funny. Oh, it can float there. It just needs to be placed. Uh, then I don't want to misplace the frames and steel sheets. So let's put them back into the pile over there. Same is true with the pass event. And grab my wrench. Okay, I... Oh, that's not a wrench. That's a uh, wire cutter. That would explain why it wasn't working. Um, actually, now I need my wire cutters because I need to power on this back pressure regulator. So what I'm going to do is have the power go up so I don't see the cabling. And set the pressure here. It will be easier to do with a labeler. Uh, so I'm gonna set the pressure. Uh, let's call this the CO2 escape valve or escape pressure. Uh, and then of course set the pressure to, well, let's set it to 10,000. And put that away. So it's 10,000 kPa and turn that on. And what should be happening is any pressure over 10,000 kPa will be forcibly vented out. Um, so we can decide what is a safe amount of pressure. 30 MPa to kPa would be 30,000 kPa. So right now it's trying to regulate the pressure of the... Um, uh, the system to bring it down to about um, 10 MPa, which is 10,000 kPa. But um, as you can see, we're adding more uh, we're adding more CO2 to the system faster than the escape pressure can handle. So what we could also do uh, is a volume pump. So let me find a little volume pump. And if you really wanted, you could hook up a volume pump to Logic to do this faster. But uh, what I can do is replace that back pressure regulator, which is, they're slow. Back pressure regulators don't work quickly, but they work accurately. Like small measured units. Uh, but the volume pump works quickly, but less accurately. Is I think the nicest way I can put it. So if I just have a 50 liter volume pump, as you can see, I just got thrown backwards. Um, that pressure is righteously dropping quick. And that's not even uh, as high as the volume pump can go. It can uh, go higher. So let me, I can't even get that close to this, uh, this volume pump. Because as you can see, getting close, the flow here throws me away. But I could increase the volume to 100 liters. What I want to do is decrease it down. All right, maybe a 10 liter flow will help to balance out the inputs. We'll see. Nope, even a 10 volume flow and we're losing pressure faster than we are gaining it. What we want is to reach sort of a, a rough equilibrium. The thing is, uh, it's not that hard to add more CO2 to the system. So a rough equilibrium here would maybe look like two liters per second. 
All right. That looks like a rough equilibrium. It doesn't need to be perfect. I just wanted to avoid the um, the eventuality of the CO2 tank. Or actually, the tank itself wouldn't rupture uh, because the tanks are um, fed by pipes. The tanks can hold higher pressure than the pipes themselves. So what would have ended up happening is not the tank would rupture, but the, some random pipe that has CO2 in it um, in this network would blow. So either right here or any of these gray pipes would explode. Um, that is exactly what would have ended up happening. All right, so now I have that volume pump. It actually looks like the numbers are going slightly down. So I'm gonna just set it up to one liter. Uh, but as you can see, this is a pretty good demonstration of how to move gases faster. Uh, the volume pumps and I can leave that off. The volume pumps move it gas really quickly, uh, but very inaccurately. And the back pressures are much slower, but they measure. Uh, so that's about all I have for this episode, guys. Uh, it ran a little long, but um, I'm glad to address some of the comments that you all had, like doing parallel plumbing and uh, not using the uh, pipe analyzers, but just really using the data ports on the tanks. Uh, if you have any feedback for me, drop me a line. I have so much more feedback to address. I just didn't address it in this episode. And if you'd like to see something specific from this series, uh, just let me know. I'm very happy to address your feedback. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.